Thunder, 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 thunder geeks are live. Hello, Thundarians. That was Jonathan Colton with the future soon. And I'm Andrew. I'm Rob. And I'm Megan. And we're your thunder geeks. Great show we have for you today. So we're in the future. We are in 2015. We have been waiting for this time for a long time. Where the hell's my hoverboard? (laughs) <laughs> I just love how whenever you're excited, you throw your hands up. And- of course. I'm very animated in the studio. So, guys, we're going to be talking about today is how the past saw us now. How they saw 2015. And there's two big movies that take place in 2015. Well, one big movie and one terrible movie. <laughs> so, there's obviously Back to the Future 2 from 1989. And then there's The Sixth Day from uh, 2000. Everyone knows Back to the Future 2. I don't think I need to explain that one. I might need to explain just the a sixth day. Just, just, a li- just a little bit. Everyone knows Back to the Future, but no one really knows Back to the Future 2. Oh, no. Everyone knows Back... Okay. I I think they know Back to the Future 2. If they don't know Back to the Future 2, uh, it takes place directly after the cliffhanger we have in the first movie. Marty travels to the future of 2015 to go rescue, oh, well, rescue his kids and to avert this disaster. And then shenanigans happens, but we're concerned with the future part. <laughs> so The Sixth Day also takes place in 2015. Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. So very... It's not a Schwarzenegger one, movie. It's a Schwarzenegger movie. It's not one of his better ones, though. It does have some awesome moments. But that's any Schwarzenegger movie. Explain Terminator 1 and 2. They're all, eh. But that was cool. I would disagree with a few. <laughs> Such as... Oh, you're gonna put me on the spot here. See, I really liked Commando. I mean, it was just I ridiculous, over the top. But that's the thing. Would you qualify it as a good movie or an enjoyable movie? Well, okay, okay, okay. If I'm saying good movie and enjoyable movie, that's definitely a different thing. Definitely a different well, enjoyable definitely. movie. Other than Terminator, yes, none of them are particularly good movies. But Six Day takes place 2015 now. Cloning has become an everyday thing, but it's illegal to do for humans. So we have Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, he is an extreme jet copter pilot, which is one of the things we didn't get. We didn't get jet copters. And what happens, he's going to be flying this very important uh, business person. And it's also his birthday, of course, because this is all going to take place on his birthday. And because it's his birthday, and also their family pet just died, there's a lot this movie throws at you. <laughs> just all at once. It's creepy just like, doll. Creepy and they doll. also Take and it. Yes, the creepy doll is very creepy as well. We'll talk about the creepy doll. Um, so what happens is their pet just died that day, and they don't want to tell their 8-year-old daughter. Well, the mother doesn't want to tell the 8-year-old daughter on, his father, on her father's birthday that their dog died. So there's this cloning service called Repet, and he switches friends. He switches with his friend, who he's supposed to fly with the important person. And his friend goes off to be Adam Gibson. He's our main character, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. What happens though is everyone is killed on that jet copter. It's and like we, final destination. Everyone dies. Everyone. Di- well, kind of, kind of. Because what happens is everyone on that jet copter was actually had samples taken of them first in case anything happened so they could clone them and no one would be the wiser. However, because Adam switched with his friend, they cloned the wrong person. So they, so when, uh, when we wake up with our protagonist here, he's in front of them all. Um, he goes into Repet and decides not to do it. Gets one of the creepiest dolls I've ever seen in a movie, the Sim doll. It's even creepier than Annabelle. It's very satisfying I'm... to watch it die, though. <laughs> <laughs> it gets its head blown off the movie spectacularly. <laughs> I'm making this movie sound a lot more awesome than it is. <laughs> and we eventually get to the big twist where it turns out Adam was the clone the whole time. But fun thing is, is all the future stuff. It's from 2000, so it's 15 years old. I think I can spoiler that one. So let's talk about what we got and what we didn't get. So... What we didn't get from Back to the Future, we got no flying cars. Where's our flying car? We've been, I'm going to say in Japan. We've been wanting flying cars since like the 50s or 60s, and we still haven't got one. I know. I mean, we do have like things that will fly, but they're not like, no, they're not. Not car. 
Yes. We, we, we don't have... Exactly. And that, that was one of the interesting things to see between, you know, what they saw in 1989 with Back to the Future 2 and what they saw in 2000 is uh, with the sixth day, no flying cars, futuristic hubcaps, but the flying car, we have given up by 2000 that we will get flying cars by 2015. So they are right on that. The thing is, is like, do we really want a flying car? I mean, uh, think about how much jet fuel costs. I'm sure they would come up with a different propul- uh, propulsion system. But the thing is, I want them because if you're flying in 3D space... No more traffic jams. Yeah, because you can just go up or down. Oh, they would They would totally... The government would just make, like, airspace. Well, there definitely. would be airspace. I mean, you'd have to fly in, like, certain lanes. But also with, you know, Google being Google, we'll probably all be flying Google cars and they'll drive themselves. <laughs> which is one of the things we did get. Um, both movies thought we would have self-driving cars. They thought they'd be commercial. At least we have till October with Back to the Future 2. Yes. Hasn't happened that way yet, though. And I still think October 21st should be dressed like it's Back to the Future 2 day. We need to do this. I'm down for that. Honestly, I've um, got my hat. <laughs> the, uh, the attire that they wear in Back to the Future 2 is very, very 80s still. And it's just, it's painful to watch, kind of. It's just like, what? why are you still wearing that aerobics jumpsuit? Well, in the sixth day as well, um, a lot of the characters kind of dressed up in that proto-emo goth thing of the early 2000s <laughs> so same thing is they they i think that the well, six we, day got fashion right more mm-hmm, yes because they uh, that they're wearing we still have like those proto emo goths or whatever you just said cyberpunk. of course yes. cyberpunk cyberpunk we still have that so that's still that we got that we do have that but that that was around then too yes however the the fashion in Back to the Future 2. Let's talk about the fashion in Back to the Future 2. <laughs> I still want my self-lacing shoes. That's the big thing I want. They did actually make self-lacing Nikes. And, and, because before the old model they made, um, came out a couple years ago, didn't lace the same way as it did in the movie. But when, uh, they're apparently going to be releasing a new version this year to coincide with the anniversary... Well, not really been an anniversary thing. The the arrival of 2015 to engineer the shoes to lace the proper way. So we may they're going to be like three thousand dollars, and there'll be like five hundred of them made, and they'll be where you'll never be able to buy them. Yep. But don't you underestimate me? Okay, I should I shouldn't (laughs) underestimate the power of Rob. I've done that before, and I've been mistaken. So my problem with the self-lacing shoes is, like, I feel like it would just, like, go into, like, this maximum overdrive kind of scenario where, like, the shoes would just turn my against you. My feet are running you. against my legs. <laughs> I feel like the shoes would just turn against you and, like, they would malfunction and you would never get the shoes off. Or they would go too tight and then they would just take your foot right off. Well, we do have smart technology in shoes, though. Because, yes, I mean, we, we, you have those, you know, Nike and Adidas runners that have all these, you know, stuff that syncs to your phone and tells you how fast you're running and what the stride is and all these technical things that someone who sits on the couch like me isn't going to care about <laughs> but at least i go "Ooh, those are cool shoes i would like them but i'm not going to use them no it's whatever helpful. happened to those like little clicker things you get in like rice krispies boxes that measure your steps pedometers that's word Pedo- oh, pedometers. oh pedometers well most of them are built into phones now yeah really yeah that was one thing i noticed between both movies neither really predicted cell phones would be as prevalent as they are now yeah I noticed that they were still using um, really, like, clunky laptops as well. Well, with that, I mean, I, 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 can, I can buy with computers and stuff. I mean, at least they got it more right than the Jetsons. <laughs> but, I mean, who, who thought we'd get to this thin when we have laptops? Exactly. And they're still thinner out there. There's, like, those oh, MacBook Airs. That are yeah, like, the micro. The ones that look like you can break them. Which you probably could. If you sneeze on them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I had, like, one of those mini laptops once, and I was scared to type on it because I was worried my fingers would just go through it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a little extreme. Now, uh, more about the fashion thing. There, there was a couple fashion tips they had there. Well, the other thing they had is the self-adjusting and drying jacket. We don't have any version of that, to my knowledge. I haven't been able to find anything like that. That I'm disappointed in, though it did malfunction in the movie because Marty Jr.'s sleeve uh, was all, like, jangled there. I noticed. Yeah, but if you also notice, Marty Jr. kind of looked like he was on some stuff. No, he was just, well, yeah, he was on eight channels at once. We do we do kind of have that because there is the scene in the movie where, you know, Marty Jr. gets home, plops in front of the TV. Now it's more about plopping in front of the computer, and he brings up eight different channels to watch at once. But the thing is, I could do that on my TV with my PS3 and my Wii and all that. Well, the thing is, we kind of do do that. Not watching 
several things at once, not usually, but I mean, how many of us are checking our phone and watching TV at the same time? We have, And like, you're not just doing one thing on your phone, you're doing like five <clears throat> things on your phone yeah. and then watching TV. Plus, plus, how many tabs do you have open on your laptop? <laughs> uh, right now, uh, only five, which is oh. surprising. Only five. Earlier today was like twenty. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> research time is research time, and then there's you know six hours of just closing tabs. I love opening tabs, opening tabs, opening tabs to the point where my computer just doesn't not show them, and I have to go to that little directory, and it's like, oh, th that's what I'm looking for. There it is. Now. They some of the fashion stuff they did have as well is no inside out pockets. Everyone uses their pockets pockets practically. That's except hard for, to say. Except for let's be honest, girls jeans those pockets. I don't even think you could fit they're a dime even, in them. They're not even they're not even existence. Don't even get me started on girls jeans oh, pockets. Yeah. Okay? Girls jeans have fake. Wait wait no. I'm curious. Why do girls jeans have fake pockets? It's Why the, not just not have pockets? It's the jeggings. It's mostly the jeggings, which is our, like, jean leggings or whatever. They mostly have fake pockets just because it will be just to look like a pocket. I don't, and I don't, why not just have an actual pocket? Yeah. I don't know, okay? It, it's it's I don't not know. that much more. I don't know what the marketing companies are doing with this, but I really, really want them to bring I, back pockets. Actually, a friend of mine came up with the perfect conspiracy theory on why women's jeans do not have pockets. I'm curious on women's jeans not having pockets. It's conspiracy. to sell purses. Ooh, that's a, oh, that's actually really good. <laughs> as a person that doesn't really use a purse, I just I'm kind of like, wow, I got the short end of the stick. But it's like you can understand it. Yes, I can. Now, as a person who does use a purse <laughs> or a laptop bag, it's a it's a purse. It, it's a purse. It, it's a purse. It's a man bag. I have, still have pockets all over me though. I can't have enough pockets, and then I lose whatever I had on me when where my I pockets get really lined up. I get really upset with like. Um, flannel overshirts as well for women because they they have the weird stitching in the front to make it like contoured and all this stuff and then they have no pockets in the front and if they do have a pocket in the it's front you pocket. can't you can't fit anything in it so that brings the question how are girls going to participate in the october 21st dress like back to the future two day we're just gonna raid our our mother's old clothes probably bust out the mom jeans yeah mom jeans and and the aerobics workout stuff 90210 this stuff <laughs> No. Now, one thing I'm kind of glad we don't have is the way they were cooking in Back to the Future 2. Yeah. Pizza Hut hydrated pizza. Rehydrated pizza. We don't really... I mean, we have rehydrators, kind of, but not like Just that. Just the microwave, five cents there, full giant pizza. The pizza didn't even look good, though. Movie pizza usually looks amazing, and it's gooey and yeah. cheesy. Yep. It still looked soggy. And it just kind of gets to you, because like, you'll never have that pizza. We have better home pizza, I would say now, than what they predicted in 1989. Yes. Because, I mean, I, I can do I can do some delicio here. Yeah, I was going to say, I could take a delicio pizza out of the oven, and it would still look better than what came out of that hydrator. The other th oh, Speaking of the kitchen, the one thing, we don't really have it, but, I mean hipsters kind of do is they had the pull down garden in their kitchen to go yeah. get fresh fruits and vegetables that was really neat i actually really liked that cool concept but i mean personal gardens has been a huge trend lately of you know growing your own stuff growing it on the windowsill especially urban garden i would love to grow stuff if i only had a green thumb i murder all plants i killed a cactus in three days how did you kill a cat okay what I, I i went to home depot bought me a cactus Okay. And, and I put it down, gave it a bit of water, because I don't know how long it's been. I, I leave it alone for a few days. I come back three days later, and it's caved in and rotted on itself. Wow. Okay, my mom has a black thumb, and she kills everything, mostly. I mean, she, it was her... Like her... your dreams? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not... <laughs> okay. I just made that a lot darker. That was sad. <laughs> like, like, she does really well with her garden outside, but, you know, inside plants... Just kind of forget about them, whatever. But she had uh, put a small cactus we had. It's like just one of those little round ones. And she put it up in the uh, the window, and it stayed there all winter. It grew fur. It grew fur. A cactus grew, <laughs> grew fur to keep itself warm. <laughs> it was the strangest thing I've ever seen. I've never seen a furry cactus, <laughs> and that sounds... We'll, we'll think of what the furry cactus is after the show. <laughs> or we can always Urban Dictionary it. We'll no, Urban Dictionary no. it later. No, no but let's, let's go back to what we don't have. 
So we um, one of the things that you saw in the movie there, because there's a lot they throw at you. Um, they don't have like the automated car maintenance stuff, and I'd really like that because then I could fix my car easier. Yes, the uh, what was it Texaco? I yeah, it was it Texaco. They had the full automated system. I did see something. It's not quite there, but Elon Musk is actually uh, developing uh, essentially a robot arm charger for these rechargeable cars for the Teslas. So that's pretty handy. Well, yeah, because I mean, <laughs> a big, a big, a big, you know, hurdle of electric cars is not only cost but convenience. If you forget to plug your car in, then you know, oops, morning comes, you're kind of boned. Then we gotta do what Tesla wanted to do. What did Tesla wanted to do? He, he was working on a way to recharge electronic products wirelessly. Tesla was a genius. He was, there... and there is a guy who just recently invented a machine that does up to five meters. So let's say you built a garage out of this. All you have to do is park the car, and it's already charging. That actually sounds kind of interesting. I was looking for things to buy with my twenty-five dollar Visa that I got for Christmas online, and there was this little um, uh, cell phone charger dock, and it's the just charge pads. Yeah, and it, but it's it looks like grass. Oh, so it kind of looks like what a chia pet grass, and you just kind of throw your phone into it, and it charges it. It I'd, be, I'd be weirded out, but I, they, I've seen ones that just look like the flat board. I haven't seen a grass one. I'd be weird about throwing my phone into grass. It well, just feels like, unnatural. It, 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 it feels <laughs> like you're mocking the outside. It's just like, I'm not going to see actual outside. I'm not going to see fake outside. Well, Here's my live, phone. We live in Canada. When are we going to see grass? Look out that window. Do you see grass? Oh, geez. It is I so saw, cold out there. I saw grass last week, yo. I was, was half expecting warm. a tauntaun to go scampering across the street while we were heading here. <laughs> If I had one, I don't think I would drive my car. I don't care how cold it would be, it would be worth it. I think we're at like minus 41 right now, so bundle up out there, because, oh man. So, a couple other things that we didn't get, but sort of. Um, the pull, like They had the pull-down flexible screen. So, I mean, we do have like super, super thin TVs, but nothing like a lampshade sort of style. No, I mean, we have projectors. Yeah. But we don't have a screen that pulls down. That'd be so cool, though. I mean, I just wonder how it would work. Tech to... is weird. Do, do you know how this phone works? No. Exactly. We don't know how 90% of the stuff we touch works. We I just, just know it. it's all built probably by people much younger than I am. Yes. I want to go back to the past. I want to go back to uh, like 1960. I and am show, a wizard. <laughs> and show them the, uh, the Apple, the, uh, the phone. That's a good way to get lynched. <laughs> you, know, you know what I want to do? I want to go back in time and be like, I have this device in my hand. It can access all information in the world. And I used to look at kitties. Look at this one. You wouldn't but be the able, but is, they wouldn't have structure. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to look up kitties. You'd have to preload kitties on your phone. I would. Then try, okay, so you, you've planned out your kitty showing. And I'd just be like, scroll, scroll. Look at this kitty. It got a hundred bite. They call it Grumpy Cat. He's worth a hundred million dollars. She. she. Grumpy Cat is a she. Tartar sauce. I love that name for a cat. I, I would still be like, this cat's worth a hundred million dollars. Feel bad for yourself that you'll never have that much because you don't have a cat with an underbite. Why did you point at me? <laughs> You're just saying Because if Andrew I pointed at her, I would poke her in the eye with a full stretch. Yes, you probably would. But with you, I can fully stretch my finger and point. No, what Grumpy Cat has become is nothing short of, like, marketing wizardry. <laughs> And feel bad you'll never have that much money. But well, a cat will. I do feel good about two things. Because there's two things they predicted in Back to the Future 2 that really aren't around anymore. They thought phone booths would still be around, which kind of plays into the, you know, they didn't really anticipate cell phones being cell phones. Because all over in the set, there are phone booths. Um, the sad thing about phone booths is, is like you can't just put a quarter into it and call somebody anymore. If, a, if there was a phone booth, you have to use a calling card. And those things, I have no idea how to use them. I haven't seen a pay phone in, in quite forever. a while. I think there's still a few in Intercity. No, nope, they're gone. Wow. Yeah, you didn't even notice because you stopped using them. I remember when we like used to go to the Husky and there would just be a, a phone right there, right at the booth where you're sitting, and you could just call anybody. But you know what? There's someone out there, I bet, who misses pay phones a lot. I do. I, I do. was going to say Superman. So, How does he change? Because remember those good old days where it's like you, you, he runs into the, the and then spin boot. around and then it's changed. I'm just imagining him like spinning around holding his smartphone. <laughs> I'd question what's going to happen with Doctor Who since you got your shirt on, but then I realize he goes back to like the 1800s and no one notices. He goes to the future and people just kind of go, oh, huh? all right, okay. 
That's a blue box. He, he actually makes a point of it in the series of when people question things, they're not going to like look at it, touch it, or observe it. They're just going to pause, go, huh, and then walk away. That's a good point. I have to test that, this that's theory. That's how humanity pretty much works. Is we'll look at it, but we're not going to actually do anything about it. So where does Superman change now? I'm well, considering with what I've read in the comics, I haven't seen any of Clark Kent. I'm just convinced he's always in the tights. Well, I read the first arc, um, and you do have some focus on Clark Kent, but because it was taking place pretty early into his career. But I can't remember him. Well, I don't think they've done the phone booth thing for quite a while Probably now. Probably not. So they, there's no phone booths to do it in. You can still change them like Tom. Oh, I know. There might be drones. Th there's always my favorite thing. Um, it's a little comic I found online of Batman asking why Clark loves phone booths so much. And he's just talking about how a blue phone booth appeared on his planet and saved his race. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh. And there's another hilarious one where he's in Britain runs into the TARDIS and you just see him in his underwear changing and the doctor's just in the background like what? <laughs> <laughs> I love crossovers like that. They're gold. One of the other big missed predictions though they thought they'd still have faxes. I mean we still have faxes but they who thought Who does? But who well I mean businesses still have faxes okay. kind of. Yes. I worked at a pharmacy and we had to send faxes to doctors and stuff all the time. There was always like stuff coming well, in Well that's more faxes. like that's more like regulations the just being outdated. Business stuff. Because I mean when and Marty gets fired for, you know, doing the swipe transaction of whatever illegalness, which, you know, it's kind of apt for 2015 as well. Um, like, every fax in the house, and they have, like, seven faxes, comes down, and it's like, you're fired! Seven fax machines in a house? Come and, on. And, and in every room. I think one of the parts is the, I can't remember the girlfriend's name, is in the closet. And, and she gets a fax, too. Yeah, the fax yeah, in the closet. In the closet. <laughs> Yeah, in the closet. I missed, I missed that. <laughs> and that's just like, who would install a fax machine in their closet? I don't know. Maybe they spend lots of time in the closet. Who knows? ba bum tss. ba bum tss. <laughs> So we're going to take a little break here. Thank you, guys. Uh, you're listening to 102.7 FM CILU. We are your Thunder Geeks, and we'll be right back. And we are back to CILU 102.7 FM. We're your Thunder Geeks, and that was Nerds with Guitars and Hero. And yes, I know, take a breath, Ro, but I don't feel like it. <gasps> yeah! Every time, one <laughs> breath. <laughs> it's like his thing. So, so you wave your hands, I take, I, I just all in one breath. And then my thing is, is I have mouth. I learned to smoke it good like on the radios. <laughs> I have good language mush skills. Mushmouth. I've got mushmouth. So, let's go back to our topic here. What we're missing, because we know what we're missing, what 1980 thought, uh, 1989 thought we were going to get. One thing, though, about uh, the dark 1985 uh, prediction of uh thing kind of reminds me of Detroit as well. Modern day Detroit, when Biff takes over. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much the same thing. So, with the sixth day, biggest thing off the bat that we don't have, and it's hilarious when it sets the tone of the movie, they were really sure the XFL was going to succeed. <laughs> 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 so, the movie opens on an XFL game, and it, it would have been like its 15th season by now. Well, well, they have, they have a while. Maybe they'll bring the XFL back. What is the XFL anyway? It's the, the extreme, extreme football, football league. Extreme. extreme. Everything in the 90s was extreme. Wait, or 2000s. 2000s. So it was all still on the like, tail end here. Yeah. So that's why the movie's bad because it's trying to be extreme. But it's past the time where extreme is cool. This is when we go to welcome to my life sort of situation. I'm sorry, but plan. the 90s didn't like end until like 2004. Okay. <laughs> it totally did. No. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call your youth on this. <laughs> Dang. There is distinct... There's a distinct shift in the culture. There's a distinct shift? A distinct shift. I want you to show me how all We're lucky to all of a sudden, I'm so sad. We all collectively decided to stop caring about boy bands. Good. Boy bands were terrible anyway. I mean, NSYNC whoa, was... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just... I, I was never part of that collection. I still care. I did like NSYNC. I'm sorry. I, I, I still have my guilty pleasures. It's just we all decided to stop caring about boy bands. So we stopped getting new ones. Yes. And come on. At 98 degrees, blah. Yeah. That was a train wreck, so hey. 
But one of the predictions they made in the movie here with uh, football players is that the quarterback in the XFL was going to be paid $300 million for a single season. And I actually decided to look. I know nothing about football other than the XFL existed just because of all the jokes that happened about the XFL. <laughs> so <clears throat> the highest paid over his career, if the internet is telling me right, would be Peyton Manning. And over his career, he's only made $229.7 million. For so, throwing a ball. Yep. It's for throwing a ball and getting people to watch him throw the ball. That's what makes the money, is getting people to watch. Okay. Watch it, me throw this. <laughs> but that wasn't entertaining. There was no people yelling in the background. There was no play-by-play -play commentary. Andrew, let's do this again. You would do a play-by-play -play commentary. People in Radio Land start cheering in three, two, one. And Ooh. Rob grabs the book. He's going to the end zone and just kind of shifts it over. <laughs> Okay, I want my money now. So, I mean, yes. However, at least they're not being paid $300 million for a single season. So, we got to give that. That is true. I still cannot believe it. How much you they know, make. Like, I can't believe that athletes are paid so much. Well, entertainers, too. Like I said, it's not so much about and, yeah, the individual sport. It's, it's all about the entertainment aspect of it. It's getting people to be engaged and then be able to sell them advertisement. Maybe maybe in 2015, someone will make 300,000 million, whatever. Well, we'll see. We'll see. It, well, that'll be the NFL, so it won't be the didn't... XFL because no extremeness. But <laughs> in the XFL, they say it's like he is the highest paid. Like, yes. no one's ever been paid this much. So, the... so, for all you know, someone could, like, sign a contract for that much. I mean, if the I'm XFL... I'm going to point out that the... what, what we, I, Okay, I don't know if he's the best quarterback, but I assume he's being paid a lot for a reason. If he hasn't made more than 300 million in his career yet i don't think they're gonna give it to one person i'm calling this this is a prediction that it's totally wrong about 2015 all, all we need is that one texan from the simpsons you know the one with the guns and who's always just yeah that's called most oh, nfl um, owners exactly all we need is him <laughs> i forgot his name but you know exactly what i'm talking about the, the cowboy the colonel yeah i don't know if he has a name um, he probably has a name, but we've, they've never said name. it in show, or they've only said it in passing. Oh, no, they probably could have said it, because apparently Bumblebee Man has a real name. He does. He has a real name. I can't for the life of me remember it, but If he only has... we had something that had access to information all over the world that they also didn't... Re well, they did for 2000. They had the internet around. But 1989 sure didn't see the internet coming. No. I don't think in that era it's e easy to predict this web of information and all this kitties <laughs> yeah kitties kitties run the internet one thing i'm disappointed we don't have though and we well we do have gmo crops but we don't have nacho flavored bananas Ugh, yeah. i would have bananas every day i would be so much healthier if we made them all nacho flavored i'm just imagining like the banana texture with the f nacho flavor and i'm just, it would just cringing. Be like eating nacho cheese just yeah like it'd be, you know like those be... people who eat the spray cheese oh gross <laughs> what you don't you've never eaten spray cheese from the can no. <laughs> well i look at you all being all civilized i don't even like like the nacho cheese in the next you're gonna tell me you don't eat peanut butter for the jar i do oh okay especially when i have hiccups it's the best cure ever really yes <laughs> next time you have ne next time you have hiccups just Give yourself a spoonful of peanut butter. I was just doing it the... because I was poor and too lazy to go outside. <laughs> the, mol yeah. the molasses and the peanut butter slows down the contractions of your esophagus and it stops your hiccups. Hmm. I know. Random things in my brain. Rob, would you have nacho flavored bananas? At least once. Maybe if they tasted it, good. It, it, was, it was nacho cheese flavored. Ugh. Again, if it tasted good, why not? But I would, I'd I still would try, try it. it. I would give it a try, definitely. Now, I mean, there's the big thing in the movie with, uh, I mean, the whole central plot of cloning. We don't have Repet yet. We can't, you know, go get Rover if he gets hit by a car or is outside for five minutes today. It's really sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a bad joke. <laughs> oh, my, my buddy's dog, if it's too cold and you start taking on a walk, once it's done, it'll just sit. It doesn't care. It's just sitting there. I'm, I'm done. done. My no, parents' dog does that too, Mimi. She just she just stops. She's just like, nope. Mm -mm. The best thing is uh, a few days ago we took it on a walk and it just had to stop on a patch of ice. So I'm just dragging this thing right across the ice, just gliding. <laughs> I'm curious, guys. Would you use Repet? I would. If like I would totally use Repet on my hamster. <laughs> I'm sorry. You you just keep bringing back your hamster over and over again. He's cool. He's a good hamster. He only he only bites people when he's tired and he's cranky. 
That's See, the I only time he'll it. ever take a nip at anybody. Well, maybe he'll be tired all the time and just be like, I want to die. Please let me die, Oh, my Megan. God, don't say that. That's so sad. <laughs> Why would you do that? Your, your hamster's not still alive, is it? He is. He oh, is. okay. I, I only got him last last October, I think it was. No, I don't I even remember when I got him. But he's he's doing good. I would screw the system and just have two of the same. Like, I would get my pet cloned while it's still in prime and have two of them. Just to really confuse them, because it's like they have the same memories and everything. They probably would have regulations around that, I would think. Probably. Because um, I, I mean, try, they I banned try. they banned human cloning, so I don't think they're gonna let you clone the pet while you still have the pet. So you can't make an evil dog army. I would still try. <laughs> I know you want to make an evil dog army because you line up with two dogs and you're like, <gasps> and all your money is gonna go into cloning your dog army, and you're just gonna have Rob running down the street with now, this. Ar- just first, I would have to fleet of dogs. It'll be a fleet of dogs. Yep. But first, I would have to like master train that first one because all the others become pre-trained. Okay, oh, but the thing, the yeah. thing is, it's like dogs. You thought this out. Dogs are not evil. You can't have an evil dog army because animals no, no, are not evil. No, no. See, here's evil. the thing. Here's the thing. They don't have to be evil. I have to be evil. As my army, they're automatically evil by yes. association. You're a sick man. <laughs> You'll never not say that when I have my evil dog army. <laughs> if we get rid of that. I'm just imagining Robert um, saying, go, my evil dog army. And then, like, all the dogs go out. And then they just end up, like, trying to fight with each other. And they're, like, <laughs> doing dog things, like, peeing on trees and just doing random dog stuff. Well, rolling around. Kelso. Ro- yes, yes. He- A whole army of Kelso. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Like I said, I would first masterfully train the one, the master dog, and then the rest would just know the commands. Yes, because that's one of the things within the movie where uh, they take an encoding, the SIN code of your brain, so it has all of your patterns and memories and stuff like that, or in this case of the pets. So anything you trained it to know before, it will know. So once Rob has his first you know, masterly trained dog to obey his every command, and he gets 16,000 dogs, Rob's good to go. <laughs> it just really makes me uncomfortable because in the movie, they're like, painlessly transfers your your pet's memories. And I'm just like, that does not sound like you're lying to me. You and are lying is, to me. the thing I would train the dogs to poop on command and like make a circle around people I don't like. But not just like a one-layered circle, like 20 dogs surrounding this guy and just all at once just... I could see you just training dogs to do that in general. I don't think you need your master dog army. I'm pretty sure you can get just a bunch of dogs and train them to do that. Yeah, dude, go to the shelter. Just get a bunch of dogs. <laughs> just one day, Andrew opens his door. Shelter house, please don't give Rob any dogs. <laughs> <laughs> if I get the dogs, they're going on your steps. Of course. I don't have, but the, they aren't my steps. I'll make, I'll put them all in Shaquanda. Oh, okay. You can't and do it'll that. just to like a man's that. Car. And Shaqu- all, yeah, Shaquanda's my car. And all winter, it'll just fester there because you don't go in there. Well, yeah, because it's cold. And then you just have like freezer burnt dog doo doo. <laughs> so, moving from that. Yes, please. <laughs> can we? <laughs> That's the same. Let's talk about Sim Pals, the scary as heck doll. So, they also have this creepy, creepy doll, which I don't think we have any analog to. Where Japanese love dolls. Okay, yeah, that that okay, that's the closest thing, but it doesn't grow hair, but it is just as uncanny valley with its face and being creepy. Okay, but the thing is, is the Japanese love or the love dolls? Uh, we'll call it love dolls. Well, the love dolls. We we all know what they're for. Yes, <laughs> they're for okay. love and affection and, and cuddling. <clears throat> the love dolls, I like. They look attractive, like they look pretty, and I look at that doll from this movie, and I just fear. Just rises. <laughs> it's a yeah. garbage pail. Yeah. I, I, well, I mean, I have to question the design. Why make it so creepy? Because it doesn't make sense. It's supposed mm. to be a children's toy. Maybe. They're just making it creepy because, like, oh, I get to make an animatronic thing. Let's make it awesome. Maybe the, people will remember this part of the movie. Definitely. Maybe, maybe the point was to make it creepy because, like, it was unnatural, and that's kind of what they were going for. Who knows? She was. An, she was annoying. My name's Cindy. What's yours? Go to sleep, Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> so one um, one other thing I'm disappointed we don't have is the extreme copter jets that uh that that was Adam Gibson's profession is that he flew copter jets on extreme tours where it would start as a uh, helicopter and then the rotors would fold back and it would turn into a jet. That's pretty cool. Would you take Starscream? It is Starscream. Would you take a copter jet tour? To work? Yeah, the whole to work <laughs> tour. <laughs> no, no a tour. Tour, not to work. Tour. Like, like tour. Oh, I want to take one to work. 
Imagine getting your pizza delivered. You can use delivered. one at work. Imagine getting your pizza delivered by hot copter jets. If, I, you, if you don't tip me well and I got a copter jet. I would tip you more for a copter jet. Now, there also was a prevalence of lasers. They lasers. were Even in 2000, they were very sure we were going to have guns that shoot lasers. And not only guns that shoot lasers, but our razors would also be lasers. So you'd be able to have a fun rhyme every morning where I get to use my laser razor. That's actually scary. I wouldn't want a, I wouldn't want something that's like searing hot, cauterizing your wounds well, the next way, to your face. Well, the way they sold it in the movie is that uh, it's designed so you can't cut yourself because that was the setup where uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger had cut himself shaving because he uses the old manual razor and his friend is, you know, like, hey, why don't you switch to the laser razor? You know? And uh, the other big thing they did is they thought tobacco would be criminalized. So they, we've, kind of, we've been going the opposite direction on uh, criminalization and such like that, but uh, they have the scene where he's taking out Cuban cigars, and I thought it was just going to be the Cuban cigars were you know still criminalized. I'm like, okay, we got that now with uh, the U.S. lowering, oh, and we've always had them, but the U.S. is lowering their embargo where the movie takes place. But yeah, no, all drugs are legal, even because uh, it's kind of implied with testing for alcohol as well within uh, the beginning of the movie. Yes. Well, I would understand testing a pilot for alcohol. I still don't understand how <laughs> our pi yeah. plane pilots are allowed to drink. It actually worries me that they can. Well, the thing is, is with the um, with the tobacco being um, illegal. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, I think it was a month ago. I don't. I'm not sure about this. Don't quote me. Um, they did a ban in Ontario for cigarettes or some something like that. They changed the laws. Like, it's like yeah. now you just can't smoke outside. Just uh, I don't. I'm I don't not remember. sure about. That. I haven't heard that. I don't remember what the what the ban is, but that they're that doing might, that they're was doing... this something you read on Facebook that was shared by an old racist aunt? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just be careful of those things. So uh, let's talk about some of the movies that uh, something some of the things that both the movies thought were going to happen and what did happen and what didn't happen. So one of the strange things is in Back to the Future, whole justice system was dismantled. So there was no lawyers anymore. And in the sixth day, they kind of still have lawyers and psych oh, l lawyers, but what happens is, as Adam Gibson is being, you know, interrogated, um, it's a virtual lawyer. It's a hologram. Weird. So, yeah. They, they, so weird. They both, they both predicted, essentially, a breakdown of the general justice system, which is, I mean, I guess that's always applicable depending on your time period and what you're viewing. Cause I, I guess everyone views their government as the most corrupt of all time at that time, and then we look back, it's like, no, we got much worse now. Well, sometimes. Sometimes. I think Canada's still pretty much the same thing. We still have maple syrup. We still have poutine. We still have Mounties on horses. But this, this was the U.S., though. This is all taking place in the States. There was um there was police officers, both of them were female in uh, Back to the Future Two. Yes, and they had hats that had little tickers on the front of them. Yeah, that went. Uh... And we have that. We have that. Interesting thing, actually, both movies predicted a female president. Really? Yes. I, I was not paying enough attention. Apparently, it's very very <laughs> brief and in passing, but yeah, it's because uh, I I watch these movies religiously in preparation here. Oh, I've watched these movies religiously anyways because I like ter both terrible movies and awesome movies. And yeah, the, both of them predicted that we'd have a female president. So we'll, we'll see in 2016, but we didn't make it for 2015. Well, we do have an African-American president, so that's a, I, that's I think a that's step. funny because I'm willing to bet that if you go back to 89, you say female president, they would be like, I can see it. The president's black. What? No. Well, I mean, there was there was candidates before that had like a serious running that I can't name off the top of my head because I haven't studied U.S. history whatsoever. <laughs> Do you own a Canadian not knowing U.S. history? Oh, that's so terrible. It's like almost, it's just like an American not knowing Canadian history. Uh, I guess it's like the Americans didn't know nothing about the War of eighteen twelve. Lots of them don't. Hockey sticks. A lot of them don't. A lot of them. Well, they're, they're well, for them. They're just taught British. Yes. And for us, we distinguish the British British from the Canadian British. Yes. They do not. And then we go, no, no, that was, that was us. That was us. That was us. That was us all along. We burned down your White House. What you going to do? Oh, gonna we're going to have some that? history buffs that are going to rebuke that. Because every, every time I bring that up, let's just leave it as a, we're going to keep pretending that's true. <laughs> whether <laughs> anyone rants about it not being true or not. Just because it's more fun, I'm going to reject your reality and substitute my own. Exactly. Now, one of the things they also thought was bo uh, going to happen in both was holograms everywhere. Yes, that was very prominent. Well, obviously. let's let's be fair. It 
if the company that made Hologram Tupac still existed, we might have by now. Because we have Hologram Hatsune Miku. Yeah, so we, I mean, we, that's a good point. We do have holograms within entertainment and stuff, and you know, CNN's obsessed with their holograms. And Tupac. And Tupac, Tupac hologram. Then did they do a Michael Jackson hologram? No, was, I think that was just South Park. Was that just South Park? There was another hologram that they did. There was Tupac and. Uh, uh, I have no idea. I want. I wanted that coming to succeed because, for me personally, what I wanted was a Nirvana reunion with hologram Kurt Cobain. That'd be awesome. I'd I don't be know really about uncomfortable that. about that. That seems. That seems. <laughs> okay, that, but but this is the closest thing I would ever get. Of course, but th- that's part of the magic is that it's something we can never have. And if we dragged it out, it would be so yeah. sterile. And I don't know like if Dave other- he would literally be a puppet on strings. I don't know if Dave Grohl would like that. I don't think Dave would go for it. I don't, I don't think either no. would go for it, Rob. I'm sorry. Well, however, when they're all dead, they, of course they'll have a whole band. Well, where- why haven't they brought back the Beatle holograms yet? Or well, because wait, they're Paul still McCartney. alive. Paul McCartney's still alive. Right, that's right. We have. Him and his, him we'll and have his, to wait. Him and his seal hunting. Him and his <laughs> general hipping, hippiness. I really want to see Tupac and Hatsune Miku <laughs> do, do a concert together. <laughs> Can we make this a thing? <laughs> that would be the... I have confirmation they totally did Michael Jackson as a hologram. So oh, was, they did? Yes. Okay. So that would have been the other one. But yeah, no, we, we really haven't got much use out of holograms. No, they're they're not commercial like they were showing in the movies. Which I'm surprised. I would think that I mean at least in more upscale malls that they would start using that. You know, even if it's just an advertisement in the middle of the mall, because I would pay attention to that. Of course, I'd go ooh and play ooh, with it. Pretty. But that makes you interact with it more, may pay more attention to the ad. Definitely. I mean, I watch the NFL sometimes, and they always have like. I'm so the- sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch it because I just kind of flip through the channels sort of thing and it's like oh and then there's like that pause in between so you kind of have to watch it for like a millisecond right anyways and there's like always those little things at the bottom I mean those are not holograms but it's still kind of cool that we can do that on TVs now yeah that's a good point that uh I mean that is imp- well it's Sort of. I mean, yeah, because they do everything on the field and all the ads and stuff. It's just superimposed. So that's kind of like a hologram. At least gives us, you know, the f- effect from the viewing screen perspective. I mean, they can't see it on on the on the field. field I... No, but we can see it at home, which is kind of cool. I could just imagine if the first hologram game where they would have the hologram grounds, where it's moving under a football player player's feet, and he'd just be freaking out. It's like, ah, what is? <laughs> Well, that's one of the things I did miss that we don't have about the sixth day was the holographic wife chair. Definitely don't have that yet. I want a holographic wife chair. She better I, bring I don't, me a sandwich. I don't think guys would physically <laughs> leave the house. Because if it does what it implies it does, yes, why, it does. why would you leave? That My was, door would have a padlock. And they I'll have just, that exact argument in the movie. It's like, well, why do I need a real girlfriend? I have her and she does everything I want. That's the. I, it's not the problem, but that's a that can become an addiction. That can. can I mean, we well dating sims, and yep. you know you do have like things um, like those guys who marry their pillows or their Nintendo DSs. Yep. Oh yeah. wow, we got, I wasn't aware of this. Megan, Japan is a I weird know, place. Japan that, can be very weird. I know that there are for dating all Japanese sims. people out there. I'm sorry, but let's face it, you're a little weird. No, they're not. I'm a little weird. Okay, <laughs> I'm weird too. We're all a little weird. Anyways, but there, there's, it's a weirdness of pop culture. Yeah. I, I wasn't aware that um, dating sims were on a 3DS. I didn't know I could oh, find them. Oh, they're, they're on every system. I need to find them. <laughs> um, with the 3DS, I think the 3DS is region locked. The Nintendo DS is region unlocked. But I, I'm sure you could find there, like people who, on, like, when wait. I go to conventions, they have discs that are unlocked so you can play them on your system. Beauty. Oh, yeah, ROM carts as well. Um, and that's probably what you would see would be a ROM cart that would be ported over so you can play it on uh, your system. They mo- usually aren't released here because Dating Sims isn't a huge genre here. Well, I mean, it is among a certain um, uh, a certain faction of people, mostly, you know, anime fans. Where are my weebs at? Whoop, 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 whoop. And, but I mean, commercial, commercially wise, Dating Sims they don't really work here. So we don't have the wife chair, but we do have virtual... We um, do have virtual We girlfriends. do have virtual relationships. We have Princess Maker 2. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the RPG where they made That's... a Snoop Dogg game? RPG nope. Maker? Oh, uh, no, RPG Maker is a software where you can make any RPG. It's a, it's an RPG builder system. Oh, because I, I saw a Magical School Girl Snoop Dogg one. 
I would be interested to play that, so let's I find that one down. That so the, the best is like the cutscenes where it's like just these tr these pictures of Snoop Dogg in a schoolgirl's dress, and that those images alone make my day. I feel bad for Snoop Dogg. Eh, Snoop's probably chill with it. Yeah, I can't imagine him raging out. Actually, there's those hilarious things where it's like you listen to his music from the start of his career, and it's like all anti-cops, all violence, and all that. Then he started smoking up, and it's just like the chillest albums out there. Well, he put out a reggae album under Snoop Nine. Snoop, Snoop Lion. Snoop Lion, but yeah. that was only for reggae. Yep, that's right. He had to change his persona just a little bit. Just a little bit, so he could get into the reggae feel. <laughs> that's what Why his... is Snoop always smiling? Because Snoop knows when you're lying. Now, one thing that both movies were convinced that, I mean, we have it. But do we really use it? Because, I mean, every call that's done in the movie, it's always a video call. And that's something that's probably one of the most common things predicted for the future that we're going to always use by our video calling. I've had FaceTime for a long time. I have, you know, Skype now. I've never video called someone. I beg to differ. There was one time you did, and it was right in this booth. Okay, no, I, that, was over, that was over Skype through my computer. So technically that counts. That does count. Actually, I, so Skype, yes, I've video called a lot like that. But, I mean, through my phone, I've never really used it. Yeah, every call you get is not a video call. Well, let's be fair. There's one movie that predicted video calls, but also predicted the fact that we don't have to. Spaceballs. Ah, yeah, that's a good point. Because he's like, oh, I'll just go to audio, and he accidentally turns it to video. Ah. But he could. He was wanting the option of just audio. Spaceballs was a really forward-thinking movie. Yes. <laughs> well, the thing is, is, is um, a movie is visual. So you want that video call for the visual purpose. Oh, I know, the visual purpose of it. But um, I guess I, I have to concede to your point, Rob. Skype, uh, yeah, there's video chat through Skype all the time, especially through relatives and through overseas. Yeah, no, we, we do video call all the time. I just didn't think in the way that we do it. Yeah, That's a really fun thing. Because when you think about do. that scene from Sixth Day, it wasn't like a phone he picked up. It was uh, on a computer. It was on his computer, yeah. Yep. That's true. Okay, so we're going to take another break here. You're listening to 102.7 FM CILU or around the world at luradio.ca. We're your Thunder Geeks, and we'll be right back. Hello, Thunderians. You're back with CILU Radio. 102.7 FM. That was drawn that way. Copy Red Leader. I'm, I'm surprised you didn't go, my name Jeff. <laughs> the my name Jeff thing is, uh, it's it's my personal thing now. I'm not, I'm not going to do it on the air anymore it's just so just loud so yeah so let's go back to the discussion here though so, things that the movies were sure we were gonna have uh now one of the things that we saw in both movies was thumbprints thumbprints were used to pay with everything it was used to get into everything um because you needed to get into the house that's why uh she well, we, she was unable to escape because she couldn't find a doorknob that was the one big difference 1989 did not think we were gonna have doorknobs 2000 was so sure of it, they did a, you know, nut shot at Arnold in the beginning of the movie with a doorknob. Yep. Which actually Poor makes guy. you think how tall he really is. Oh, yeah. Oh, jeez. I never thought how tall he is. Okay, yeah. Is. Well, I mean, I... That's I, a low doorknob, but still. It, well, it gives you perspective. I don't think... I don't think Arnold is as tall as we all think he is, to be honest. I'm convinced he's at least 6'3". At least. Really? If only we had something that we can look up information with. <laughs> <laughs> well, while he does his thing, let's talk about Arnold's nuts. No, uh, no thanks. <laughs> I'd rather not. All right, fine. But uh, let's talk about thumbprints. So, I mean, would you use your thumb thumbprint to pay for things? I think you. Um, I think we can now. Well, you can. I'm kind, not, I'm you kind of sure. can. Um, with the Apple Tap payments. Yeah. Um, you do have to register your thumbprint on it to, to be able to use it. We don't. I don't think we really have anywhere that will accept in Canada yet. There's a thumbprint recognizer for your laptop. You plug it into the USB and you can... You, your own phone? I have it. one on my phone. That's why I unlock my phone and keep Rob away from it. Yeah. I will figure it out. Nope, you'll need to chop off my thumb. I don't need to. Mythbusters did a whole thing on how to steal someone's thumbprint. This one you have to swipe. They did a Ooh. whole thing about it, though. Okay. They well, make a 3D copy of it out of the special rubber that goes over their own thumb. Well, you'll have to get that special rubber first. Okay, it'll be the challenge to steal my thumbprint and this, get into my this phone. This is so ridiculous. You're going to go through all this just to try to hack his phone. Just to go on his Facebook 
and write something very inappropriate. We've established this before. Never underestimate the powers of Rob yes. or the lengths that he'll go to to get something done. He's just gonna he's just gonna hack into your Facebook and write, "I can count to potato" or something. Oh no, it would be something because of how much effort I'm going into this. It's it going to be, be something memorable. It would have to be something elaborate, like changing all of your photos and all your albums and stuff to, like, Nicolas Cage or something. That's exactly <laughs> what Rob would do. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's terrible. Now, the other thing we kind of have with uh, with movie smart houses. That's something we saw in both where we have uh, you know, a lot of voice command with uh, Back to the Future and then we, we have the smart fridge, which actually kind of exists. Yeah, the smart fridge in, will uh, tell you when you're running low on a few things. Yeah, that was that was in the sixth it, day. Yeah, it keeps it keeps track. You just enter it in, and then it keeps track of it. Now, does it order it from Amazon? <laughs> I don't remember. I just remember seeing it. See, all this tech stuff, I feel like even nowadays I'm primitive because I don't use debit or credit cards. I'm pure cash, and plastic money is still weird to me. Like, I want my old cloth money. I, I don't like having physical money on me. The less money I can have on me, the less likely I will be robbed. Oh, see, even if I'm robbed. <laughs> I love that word. I been set you up for that. You've been robbed. But the thing is, I don't like carry around cash. I Okay, if I need to buy something, I find out exactly how much it is, mm-hmm. bring that much, buy it, and go. Yeah, and I'm I'm too lazy to calculate that. I want everything. I want tap payments on my phone. I haven't got that working yet because they haven't updated the app for us. But the moment I can tap my phone and leave my wallet at home, the happier I am. I just feel like I just am so bad with money that it doesn't matter what happens. I just it's gone eventually. <laughs> See, here's the thing. I I used to have a credit card, and then I did all the shoppings online, and no, never again. Well, some people can manage manage that kind of stuff. Some people just can't. Because to me, with a credit card, even if it was a thumbprint, it feels less real. Eh, I know. For, for me, I just do it. I check. It's all on my phone. I check well, how much I have on my phone, how much goes in and out, and then I love my phone. I wonder how long you could go without it. Not that long. Because um, uh, I lost my phone over Halloween. <laughs> Before the end of the week, is like, I can't take it. I need a new phone. And then I went and got my little Note 4 here. Uh, let's talk about some of the stuff we kind of have. Not exactly, but kind of have. And the big thing is hoverboards. Oh my god, do all of us want hoverboards so, so badly. And we're getting closer. We're getting so close. They still need a specialized, you know, uh, park for it. But, I mean, you gotta think. Maybe that did play a role in Back to the Future too, because he couldn't use it over water. It still hovered, but he couldn't power it anymore. So maybe they just had all that special material that makes hoverboards work in real life uh, on the roads. Because I remember they were trying to use it with magnets. They are trying to make it's it like work with It's like a super cool magnets. magnets. Uh, there yeah. is a company, what they're, they're actually going to be making a skate park that runs on the hoverboard. Uh, I need it's going to be insanely expensive and it's just going to be like SpaceX where we'll be long dead before we get the ride on the hoverboard. Okay, that makes me really sad. Or, okay, wait, wait. <laughs> or, or we win the lottery. Or we win the lottery. They invent hover walkers. Uh, I'd be okay with a hover walker. That'd be Wally. No, yes. not like the chair. Just like imagine an old person's rocker. Yeah, and but you just if I'm gonna like have, a, if I'm but gonna... but it has a joystick on, so you can like propel yourself forward and back and side to side, and you're just kind of hovering at a slow speed. <laughs> I want to sit. <laughs> I want the hover walker just to see like old people floating by. Now, one thing they did get really right was 3D movies. I mean, we don't have the holographic jaws popping out. But, uh, yeah, 3D movies, every movie is converted to 3D now just to bang some extra bucks out of the box office. And, yeah, that was one of the things they thought. We don't know if the Cubs are going to win the World Series. I know nothing about baseball. I think they're still terrible. Probably. Probably. I I just, I have no idea about athletic yeah, stuff. Be, well, yeah, look at what we do. Look at our name of our show. <laughs> we, we're we definitely sports experts. Of course. Definitely. I, I, t- I totally have a fantasy football league. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I, I watch the thing with the ball and the running. I tried to watch the... football once. At some point, I would actually like to do my own live commentary because they start talking about random things. And I'm like, well, that is, what does that have to do with football? And my buddy's like, eh, I, I don't know. I just, I know, understand the rules, but I can't explain them to you. <laughs> Yay. Pretty much any... Most team sports can be broken down to get this ball to that side. Go sports. I would watch Quidditch if it was a thing. I would play Quidditch if it was a thing. <laughs> give me a I'll, 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 give me a broom. I am good. What what position would you play? Oh, 
I, I didn't st- I didn't study the sport of Quidditch enough to understand it. Okay. But I do know that they fly around on brooms, and there's the gold spindly thingy, and yeah. then there's the hoops. However, the rules of Quidditch I am completely unfamiliar with, though I am aware there is a real Quidditch league. You know, you yes. got to play with one day? Hmm. Beer pong Quidditch. Yes. Oh, yes. We'll try that in the future. The future is now. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> the future is now. <laughs> one of the things they kind of got was drones. In uh, Back to the Future 2, uh, they have the news drone uh, that's interviewing, well, that's recording outside of the, you know, the courthouse after it's crashed into. Uh, they have a dog walking drone, so we were not to that level of sophistication, but the Arnold Schwarzenegger style drone, because the jet copters, also drones, remotely, they were able to remotely pilot them. Yeah. We got drones everywhere. We can buy our own drones. Oh, that just reminds me of that South Park episode. Of course, and I want my own drone <laughs> because I want to spy. Like, we want to spy on people. That's the only reason we want a drone is we want to spy on people. We no, I, I want to spy use, on squirrels. I want to. Use I want to m- follow a squirrel. <laughs> okay, you want to spy on squirrels. I want to. You're use still my, spying. I want to use mine to walk a dog. Why not? It'd be fun. It'd be well, f- not the ones we have now. Yeah, those drones are like yay big, and you can't walk a dog. And pretty much one. foam made. You could, you could try. Like it's a tiny dog. Get a chihuahua. Yeah, just get a chihuahua. It's you just see run. this chihuahua on a leash flying by. <laughs> no, you keep the, you keep it low to the ground, and it'll it'll just walk itself, basically. No, no, I want a flying chihuahua now. I I want I want drones so I could just le- uh, it'd be a comfortable harness. Like a so, harness. So it's not like <clears throat> just 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 this chihuahua just randomly hovering by. Put a cape on it. It's super true. Yes. Super chichi. And when it's gone, you can just repet it. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, dro- drones Dad, and Dad, I broke the dog again. Can we repet it? Yeah. Well, I wonder if you would pass on your family pet. See, I think after a while, all those memories would just, like, mess with it. Probably more than likely. That's the thing about cloning. Like a, well, the thing is the dog doesn't... That's part of the thing is that the, the clone doesn't know it's a clone. It doesn't know it's a clone, but think of a brain like a hard drive. They say it gets the memories of the dog past. So if you kept doing this, wouldn't eventually the brain just full, fill up? Well, no, because it's the it's the synapses and stuff. So, I mean, yeah, like even if it scans your whole brain, it's not going to scan the memories you don't really have anymore. It's just going to scan yeah. the existing stuff. Because that's one thing with how memory works is your memory changes as you remember it, or as you try to remember it future, as time goes on. Memory is a weird thing. So it's only going to be the current snapshot of everything in your brain right now. So it's just going to duplicate your brain and at then you the moment have that of death. one dog that's that actually has a doggy eidetic memory i wonder how that would work with an eidetic memory would they be able to forget that's like too much information that would just drive the dog crazy you just chase the tail all day <laughs> well that's what dogs do anyway so <laughs> that's, 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 why, that's why dogs do it though their yes. brain is full that's however the... repet is very clear they have insurance and they promise no defects they promise it, but I, I just, I don't know. But which, 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 pet, which pet would you have kept around? Um, I never had a pet long enough for it to pass. I was always allergic and we had to give it away. Huh. So a sadness. So no pets for you, Rob? Fluffy. What I know was Fluffy? He was a cat that thought he was a parrot dog. Aww. He'd sit on your shoulder. No matter how big he got, he would just chill on your shoulder. Mm-hmm. And if you had a paper ball, he'd play fetch. Mine would be my budgie manic. It was the budgies. I love budgies. Yeah, it, it was because uh, I was a lame kid. Yes, manic. It was totally named after Sonic Underground. <laughs> I was young at the time. I didn't know any better. For shame. I know. I feel ashamed. I feel very ashamed of my fandom of Sonic Underground while I was a kid. So I had a budgie named after Son- uh, after manic. In my defense, my sister had one named after Sonya. And it was the coolest bird ever because it would just chill up my shoulder and it had a thing for cleaning teeth, which was a little anti-predator because it would try to climb inside your mouth. <laughs> yeah, their uh, budgies will try to clean your mouth and stuff for you. It's really, but he it's tried really to strange. Put, he, try, he would always try to perch on my mouth. And I was like, no, and I had to pull him out. <laughs> oh, my cat used to clean my beard when I got milk in it from cereal. Well, that just makes sense. I do that too when you get cereal in your beard. <laughs> 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 I thought we assi- I thought we agreed. No talking about our private times. No, it's all it's all the dirty laundries you're out just, here. You're just talking about the budgie, and now I really still really want a budgie really bad. Are you allergic to budgies too? I am allergic to birds. 
but I'm also allergic to hamsters, and I have a hamster, so... Just get a fur furless or featherless bird. I, I don't no. think they have a featherless bird. I mean, I've least... seen some. Okay, well, those, they probably those... did that manually, and that sounds very yeah. cruel. The no, thing... the birds do it to themselves. Yeah, the birds, the birds, if they're overstressed and stuff, sometimes if they have allergies, they'll pull out their feathers. So it's like cats when they like they get really bored and they'll start chewing out their fur. Yeah, yeah, basically. It's really sad. It's sad, but have you ever seen a parrot with nothing below its neck? Yes, I have, and it's terrifying. <laughs> you say terrifying. I say it just looks funny. It, it looks like you're preparing to put, make like a turkey or a chicken dinner, except for it's got a bright, colorful face. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it's I, like the I, opposite. I don't, I, it's the opposite of a butterface. I'm more. I'm more curious of why you've looked up so many naked birds. Uh, my buddy used to work in Super Pet. Oh, okay. Oh. So and, you used to be like, "Hey, look at this." Click. No, no, it was in click. It was, "Hey, Rob, look at that." <laughs> and then I look at it and go, "Wow." He also taught it to whistle the Imperial March. Oh, that's pretty awesome. But it would only do it during opening, for some reason. So let's circle back around here. One of the things that uh, Back to the Future got really right was the control. Well, not really right, but they did predict controllerless gaming. Because they have the scene within the 80s retro bar. Uh, oh, what was it, the game Elijah Wood. No. Oh, yeah, it was the Elijah Wood cameo. Really? I wouldn't say it's I, yes. a cameo. It's where he started his career. He yeah, was, was a little kid in Back to the Future. I did not even. I did not even catch that. I knew that. I forgot about that. I, I forgot see, the name see, of the that's game. That's how much I've seen it. it. It was shootout. Shootout. Yeah. So yeah, and they're, they're like, oh, you know, you use your hands. That's for babies. Well, it's kind of the reverse. I mean, we do have things like the Connect, but and no one really uses it. I beg to differ. Okay, you use it at parties. I beg to differ. Who uses the, do you you don't use the connect when I was living with someone prior to we used it all the time what what did you use on the connect we we played wipeout oh well okay well I'm gonna eat my words here however it's not I would argue that it's not mainstream no it that, really that isn't. is totally the connect is probably the most successful add-on but it's hardly and, ever used. And Whenever I go to my fan expo, I go to the dance dance booth and dance with all the pretty ladies. I guess that's a good point. Uh, Connect with uh, Just Dance is huge, and it's a series that I actually haven't been into. So, if that... well, let's be honest, I don't think you'd have room in your apartment to. Yeah, my my tiny tiny little man cave. I've played Just Dance, and it's really really fun. It's really fun. I enjoyed it. If you have it, we could set up in my place and have like a Thunder Geeks Just Dance party. That sounds that sounds like it can go nothing but right. I'll, 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 I will beat you both at this game. Oh, right. please. Have you seen my moves? I can shake my booty like nobody's business. I'm a Funkatronic machine. Oh, it's on. Okay, it's on. It's on. So we're, we're going to be apparently having... We've just settled now having a Just Dance contest. So we need to get a hold of Just Dance. So, uh, last thing that they kind of predicted here, um, before we start wrapping everything up, is self-serve restaurants. That was the, one of the big things about the restaurant. We're not to that degree yet, where there's nobody there. Not nobody, but there are some restaurants in Japan and some in the States where you literally touch screen order. Yes. And some of these places look really cool because it like fly through like rings and hoops and roller coaster things before, Ooh, that's so much before it gets to your table. McDonald's is starting to do that as well. They're rolling out uh, trial locations where they're doing self-serve, where you can build your own burger and you just type it in and get, you know, delivered to you. I feel like that's going to um, lower the amount of jobs that oh, they yes. already don't have. Oh, yes. Um, if you haven't seen it, I'll show it to you. Uh, I'll recommend it to everyone. Uh, CPG Gray, fantastic YouTuber, uh, recently did uh, Humans Need Not Apply, where it talks about uh, automation, where... There's going to be a new industrial revolution, like we're not really planned for, where everything's going to start becoming automated, and not just you know low-level service jobs like you know our self-driving cars with uh, the Google Car. You know, taxis and transports are going to jump on that as soon as possible, because if you can you know get a robotic car to drive itself or a robotic truck to drive itself and transport things, it's a lot cheaper and a lot safer than humans. We used to have automated vehicles, and then we took away the horse. No, horses do not count. Horses do count because they... they horses were... still get tired, though. Yes, they do. It's, it's, yes. it's a little... And you have to feed them and all yeah. that. But I get what you're coming from. This there's, is there's... more efficient than the horse. Yes. This is Because, I mean, the reason we moved away from horses and moved to automobiles is because automobiles were more efficient than horses. An automobile that doesn't need someone to drive it and you don't need to pay someone to be in that seat, 
Yeah, that, that replacement can happen pretty fast. And then we have to move into like AI, where they have taught, you know, they have taught them to, you know, they have taught programs to construct music that you can't really tell the difference of. Hmm. We call it Miley Cyrus. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Miley Cyrus sings? I thought she just wore weird outfits and stuck her tongue out. <clears throat> she used to sing. She used to, and then she changed. I liked, I like. Now it's auto tune. I, now, now I prefer old Miley because I never You're liked. You're taking a stand on I Miley? I liked, I liked, I never, never liked Miley Cyrus until she changed. And I was like, no, Miley, why? I, I was, I was apathetic and I am still apathetic. <laughs> But yeah, no. With, with that's that's one of the, that's pretty much the thesis of the video. Um, humans need on apply. Definitely check it out. I'll show it to you guys after the show. And it yeah, it's and probably one of the more interesting post a link. Oh yeah, I'll post a link on the the Facebook page. Let's actually plug that because we're gonna wrap up the show here. Thank you guys for listening. This is 102.7 FM CILU. If you want to continue the conversation with us, you can do so online on our Facebook page at uh, you know facebook.com slash thundergeekspeak. Or our Twitter page at ThunderGeeks, or even send us some fan mail at uh, thundergeeks at yellowradio.ca. 